What is an HRO? HRO stands for High Reliability Organization. An HRO is one that has succeeded in avoiding catastrophes in an environment where normal accidents can occur due to risk factors and complexity. Principles of an HRO are derived from studying organizations like the air traffic control system, guiding commercial aviation that operate under hazardous conditions and whose safety levels are far better than those for healthcare. For the commercial airline industry, the need for safety standards was made clear under the most tragic of circumstances. In particular, a singular event over a half century ago. On June 30th, 1956, two commercial airliners departed from Los Angeles a few minutes apart. One was a United Airlines DC-7 bound for Chicago, the other a TWA Super Constellation headed for Kansas City. An hour and a half later they collided 21,000 feet above the Grand Canyon. 128 people, everyone on board both planes, was killed. This disaster spurred the origins of regulating commercial air traffic as we know it today. The modern day air traffic control system is an HRO because far more often than not, it has succeeded in avoiding catastrophes in an environment where accidents can be expected. Nowadays, even one airliner crash a year in U.S. airspace is not acceptable, nor should it be. Ten jumbo jets crashing every single week is unthinkable, and yet, that is how many Americans die from preventable healthcare events each year. So what can we do? There are steps that can be taken today that may bring this number to near zero. There are several principles that define HROs as responsible for the mindfulness that enables them to work safely, even in environments containing significant risks. First, HROs are proactive to prevent errors. We are a highly skilled team whose primary function is patient-centered care, but all humans are fallible. HROs account for human limitations and build safeguards. To prevent errors, we should be asking ourselves, what is a culture of safety? What information will we need? What are the barriers and constraints in our way? Who else needs to know? Next, HROs are reluctant to simplify. Simple processes are good. Explaining errors is complex. Avoid shortcut explanations of failure. For example, unqualified staff, inadequate training, communication failure. This is essential to understand the true reasons patients are placed at risk. Always ask the question, why? Another principle is sensitivity to operations. Always be looking for the unusual, the unexpected. Look to close loopholes and processes where there is potential for patient harm. Always maintain situational awareness and don't be afraid to speak up. Everyone must be part of the culture of safety. It begins with each member of the health system, not just providers. Volunteers, technicians, administrators, housekeeping, and even our patients and their families should be focused on safety. An additional principle is a commitment to resilience, to err as human, mistakes will be made. We will quickly identify gaps and have structures in place so we can immediately respond and minimize preventable harmful events. Finally, we must always defer to subject matter experts. Find the experts for a given problem in the given time, but also recognize that more often than not, those closest to the front line are the real experts. Regardless of where they are in the medical hierarchy or their military rank, they can also include the patient and his or her family. They need to be empowered to make decisions when a critical issue arises. This can ultimately result in preventing a harmful event from even occurring. In applying these principles throughout Army medicine, our goal as a team is to achieve a state of what is called collective mindfulness through engaged leadership at all levels, culture of safety, and robust process improvement that will ultimately create a high reliability organization. As we move to a high reliability organization, patient safety and quality must become ingrained in our core values and not just be a benchmark that we aim to achieve. We cannot improve patient safety and achieve zero preventable harm without integrating the principles of an HRO into our culture. A culture where our housekeepers, providers, nurses, medics, and our entire team are truly empowered and expected to advocate for our patients. A culture where our leaders must clearly communicate the expected behaviors in a concise, simple fashion. Safe, high-quality care is our primary mission. It is that simple. 
Create an environment where staff know they are accountable for being capable, conscientious, and preventing unsafe behavior. And individuals will not be punished for system failures. Be engaged. Hear patients and frontline staff concerns about issues that interfere with the delivery of safe care. As leaders, we must be present and active in this daily process of building a culture of safety. Finally, we must set the example and demonstrate correct attitudes and behaviors in everything we do. Establishing this safe culture in our movement to a high reliability organization will be a tremendous challenge, one that we can and must succeed in. Our service members, their families, and our retirees deserve nothing less. We are Army Medicine, serving to heal, honored to serve.